Welcome, dear friend. I'm so glad you've taken the time to join us today. It's no coincidence that you're here, and I truly believe that God has something special to speak into your heart. In the hustle and bustle of life, it's easy to let our faith become something we only think about occasionally or keep tucked away in the quiet corners of our hearts. But faith is meant to be so much more than that. It's a dynamic living force that has the power to change everything, our perspectives, our choices, and even the course of our lives. Faith isn't just a belief we hold, it's a way of life. It's not just something we say we have, but something we show in how we live, how we love, and how we serve. God didn't design faith to be passive or hidden. He designed it to be vibrant and active, to influence every decision we make, every word we speak, and every action we take. When we truly grasp this, we begin to see faith not as a static possession, but as a powerful tool that God uses to work in us and through us. Today, we are going to explore what it really means to have a faith that moves, faith that doesn't just stay within the confines of our minds but steps out boldly into the world. We'll delve into the lives of those who have gone before us, people like Abraham, Moses, and Rahab, who not only believed in God but acted on that belief in ways that changed history. Their stories are not just ancient tales, they are living examples of how God calls each of us to put our faith into action. As we journey through this time together, I want to encourage you to open your heart to what God might be saying to you personally. Consider how your faith can be more than just words or feelings, but a tangible expression of God's love and power in your life. Whether it's through small acts of kindness or significant steps of obedience, your faith in action has the potential to transform not only your own life, but also the lives of those around you. So, let's dive in together, with open hearts and minds ready to embrace the fullness of what it means to live out our faith every single day. The Foundation of Faith Let's begin by grounding ourselves in the essence of what faith truly is. Faith, at its core, is more than just an abstract concept or a fleeting emotion. It is the bedrock of our relationship with God, the very foundation upon which our spiritual lives are built. Hebrews 11 verse 1 gives us a profound definition, saying, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. This scripture beautifully captures the essence of faith, it's the assurance we have in things we cannot yet see, the confidence that what God has promised will come to pass, even if our current circumstances suggest otherwise. Faith is about more than just holding on to a set of beliefs, it's about anchoring our lives in the promises of God, trusting that He is at work behind the scenes, even when the path ahead is unclear. It's the courage to move forward when we can't see the whole picture, knowing that God is guiding our steps. Faith is what sustains us in times of uncertainty, what gives us hope when the world around us seems shaky, and what allows us to keep going even when we don't have all the answers. But here's the crucial point, faith isn't just about what we believe in our hearts, it's also about what we do with those beliefs. James 2 verse 17 challenges us with a powerful truth, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. This verse reminds us that faith isn't meant to be passive or stagnant. True faith, the kind that pleases God, is active and alive. It's not enough to simply say we have faith, our lives should reflect that faith in tangible ways. This doesn't mean that we earn our salvation through our actions, salvation is a gift of God's grace freely given to us through faith in Jesus Christ. But what James is pointing out is that genuine faith naturally produces good works. If we truly believe in God's promises, if we genuinely trust in His character, then that belief will inevitably influence every aspect of our lives. It will shape how we make decisions, how we treat others, then how we respond to the challenges and opportunities that come our way. When we have faith, it shows in our actions. It's seen in the way we love others, in the choices we make to honor God, and in the way we serve those around us. Faith that is alive and active is faith that moves us to live differently, to step out of our comfort zones, and to pursue God's will with determination and purpose. 
It's the kind of faith that doesn't just talk but walks, that doesn't just wait but walks, and that doesn't just hope but acts. So, as we reflect on the foundation of our faith, let's remember that faith is more than just a belief system. It's a call to action, a call to live out what we profess with our lips. When we truly grasp the depth of God's promises and the reality of His presence in our lives, our faith becomes the driving force that propels us to live in a way that honors Him, impacts others, and brings glory to His name. Abraham, the father of faith. One of the most profound examples of faith in action is Abraham. God called Abraham to leave his home, his country, and his family to go to a land he would show him. Abraham didn't have a map or a detailed plan, but he trusted God and acted on that faith. In Genesis 12 verses 1 to 4, we see Abraham's obedience, so Abraham went as the Lord had told him. His faith wasn't passive, it moved him to leave behind everything familiar and step into the unknown. Later, in Genesis 22, Abraham's faith was tested when God asked him to sacrifice his son Isaac. Despite the unimaginable request, Abraham acted in faith, trusting that God could raise Isaac from the dead if necessary. Abraham's willingness to act on his faith was so significant that God provided a ram in place of Isaac, demonstrating that faith coupled with action leads to God's provision. Moses leading in faith. Moses is a remarkable example of faith in action, showing us that even the greatest leaders in the Bible started with doubt and fear. When God called Moses to lead the Israelites out of Egypt, Moses didn't immediately embrace the mission with confidence. Instead, he questioned his own abilities and worthiness. In Exodus 3, we see Moses at the burning bush, encountering God in a powerful way. Yet, even in that holy moment, Moses hesitated. He asked, oh, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? Exodus 3 verse 11 Moses doubted his capacity to fulfill such a monumental task, focusing on his weaknesses rather than on God's strength. God, however, didn't leave Moses in his doubt. He reassured him with the promise of his presence, I will be with you, Exodus 3 verse 12. This assurance was not just a comforting word but a declaration that the success of the mission would not depend on Moses' abilities but on God's power. Even so, Moses continued to express his insecurities, worrying about his lack of eloquence and how the Israelites and Pharaoh might respond to him, Exodus 4 verse 10. Despite these fears, God provided Moses with signs to perform a stuff that could turn into a serpent, then the assurance that Aaron, his brother, would speak for him if needed. Moses' journey of faith didn't start with unshakable confidence, but with small steps of obedience. With each step he took, his faith grew stronger. He didn't know how Pharaoh would react, how the people would respond, or how they would survive the journey ahead, but he moved forward because God had called him. In Exodus 7-12, we see Moses standing before Pharaoh, delivering God's commands with increasing boldness. Despite Pharaoh's stubborn refusal and the escalating plagues, Moses persisted. His faith in God's word gave him the courage to confront the most powerful ruler of the time, demanding the release of his people. Moses' faith reached a critical point when he led the Israelites to the Red Sea. Faced with an impassable body of water in front of them and Pharaoh's army closing in behind, the situation seemed hopeless. Yet, Moses trusted in God's promise of deliverance. In Exodus 14 verses 13 to 14, Moses told the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you, you need only to be still. This was a declaration of faith, faith that God would do what he said he would do, even when the circumstances seemed impossible. Then, in an act of incredible faith and obedience, Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and God parted the waters, allowing the Israelites to walk through on dry ground. This wasn't just a miracle, it was a testament to what happens when faith is put into action. 
Moses didn't just believe God could save them, he acted on that belief, leading the people forward even when it seemed they were trapped. His faith allowed God's power to be displayed in a miraculous way, delivering the Israelites from bondage and leading them towards the promised land. Moses' story teaches us that faith isn't about having all the answers or feeling completely confident in our abilities. It's about trusting God enough to take the next step, even when we feel inadequate or uncertain. Moses' obedience, his willingness to act on God's commands, opened the door for God to work mightily through him. His faith wasn't just a private belief held in his heart, it was a lived-out reality that had tangible effects on the world around him. This shows us that when we act on our faith, even in the face of fear and doubt, God can work through us in ways we never imagined. He can turn our weaknesses into strengths, our fears into courage, and our uncertainties into victories. Like Moses, we may not always feel ready or equipped, but when we step out in faith, trusting in God's power rather than our own, we allow him to do the impossible through us. Moses' life reminds us that true faith moves beyond belief into action, and through that action, God's glory is revealed to the world. Rehab, Faith That Saves In the book of Joshua, we come across the story of Rehab, a woman whose life and faith stand as a powerful testimony to the transformative power of belief in God. Rahab was a resident of Jericho, a city that was about to face the judgment of God through the advancing Israelite army. But Rahab's story is not just one of impending doom, it's a story of redemption, courage, and the kind of faith that takes risks and defies expectations. Rahab wasn't someone who, by human standards, would be seen as a likely candidate for God's favor. She was a prostitute living in a city that was marked for destruction. Her life up until this point had been one of moral and spiritual compromise and she was far from the covenant promises that God had made to Israel. Yet, it is precisely in her unlikely circumstances that we see the extraordinary nature of God's grace and the power of faith in action. In Joshua 2, Rahab encounters two Israelite spies who have come to scout out the city of Jericho. Despite the risk, Rahab chooses to hide these spies from the king's men who are searching for them. This was no small act of kindness, it was an act of treason against her own people, an act that could have cost her life. But Rahab's decision was not made lightly or out of mere impulse. It was born out of a deep conviction, a belief that the God of Israel was the true God and that he was about to deliver the land into the hands of his people. Rahab's faith was not just a silent belief hidden in her heart, it was demonstrated through her courageous actions. She told the spies, I know that the Lord has given this land to you and that a great fear of you has fallen on us, for the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on the earth below, Joshua 2 verses 9 and 11. Rahab had heard of the mighty works of the God of Israel, how he parted the Red Sea, how he delivered his people from Egypt, and she believed in his power and sovereignty. Her faith was so strong that she was willing to align herself with the God of Israel even if it meant turning against her own city. By hiding the spies and deceiving the king's men, Rahab put everything on the line. She risked her life, her home, and her future because she believed that God's plan was more powerful and more important than the life she had known in Jericho. In return for her kindness, the spies promised her that she and her family would be spared when Jericho fell. Rahab's faith was not only courageous, it was also practical. She took immediate steps to secure her family's safety, gathering them in her home and marking her window with a scarlet cord as the spies instructed, so the Israelite army would know to spare her household. When the Israelites, led by Joshua, marched around Jericho and the city walls came tumbling down, Rahab's home stood firm. True to their word, the Israelites spared Rahab and her family, rescuing them from the destruction that befell the rest of the city, Joshua 6 verses 22 to 23. Rahab's life was forever changed because she chose to act on her faith. She was not only saved from physical destruction but also brought into the community of God's people. Her story doesn't end there, Rahab went on to marry an Israelite man named Saman, and she became the mother of Boaz, 
who was an ancestor of King David and, ultimately, of Jesus Christ, Matthew 1 verse 5. Rahab's faith had a generational impact, becoming part of the lineage of the Savior of the world. Rahab's story teaches us that no matter our past or our circumstances, our faith in God, when put into action, can lead to salvation and change the course of our lives. Rahab was not defined by her past but by her faith. Her courage to act on that faith not only saved her life but also brought her into the greater story of God's redemption. It's a powerful reminder that God's grace is available to all regardless of our background or past mistakes. When we choose to believe in God's promises and act on that belief, He can use us in ways that surpass our understanding and expectations. Rahab's example challenges us to consider how we might be called to act on our faith today. Are there risks we need to take, steps of obedience we need to follow, or both decisions we need to make to align ourselves with God's will? Rahab's story encourages us that when we do, we too can experience the saving power of God and become part of His unfolding plan of redemption. Jesus, the ultimate example. When we talk about faith in action, we must look to the ultimate example, Jesus Christ Himself. Throughout His earthly ministry, Jesus not only taught about faith, He embodied it in every word, deed, and interaction. Jesus lived a life of perfect obedience and trust in the Father, demonstrating what true faith in action looks like. His life was a continuous unfolding of divine purpose, where faith was not just an abstract belief but a tangible force that changed lives, challenged norms, and ultimately altered the course of history. From the very beginning of his ministry, Jesus showed us that faith in action involves compassion, service, and a deep commitment to doing the will of God even when it requires great sacrifice. Consider how Jesus healed the sick, restored sight to the blind, cleansed lepers, and raised the dead. Each miracle was an act of faith, not just his own faith in the Father's power, but also a call for others to believe. When Jesus healed the paralytic in Matthew 9 verse 2, he saw the faith of the man and his friends, then said, Take heart, son, your sins are forgiven. Later, he told the man to get up, to take your mat and go home, and the man was healed. Here, we see that Jesus' actions were always intertwined with a deeper spiritual truth, faith not only heals the body but also restores the soul. Jesus' faith in action also manifested in his deep compassion for those in need. In Matthew 14, when Jesus saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Later, as evening approached and the disciples urged him to send the crowd away to find food, Jesus performed the miracle of feeding the 5,000 with just five loaves of bread and two fish. This miracle, like many others, was an act of faith, a faith that the Father would provide even when resources seemed insufficient. Jesus didn't just see the immediate physical needs of the people, he also addressed their spiritual hunger, teaching them about the kingdom of God. His actions were a clear demonstration that faith in action means seeing beyond the surface and meeting both the physical and spiritual needs of others. But perhaps the most profound example of Jesus' faith in action is found in his journey to the cross. Jesus knew from the beginning of his ministry that he was sent to fulfill a divine mission, one that would require him to suffer, die, and ultimately rise again for the salvation of humanity. Throughout his ministry, Jesus spoke of this mission with unwavering faith, even though he knew the immense suffering it would entail. In John 10 verses 17 to 18, Jesus said, The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. In the Garden of Gethsemane, as the weight of what was to come pressed heavily upon him, Jesus prayed in anguish, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Matthew 26 verse 39 Here we see the depth of Jesus' faith, his absolute trust in the Father's plan, even when it meant enduring the cross. Jesus didn't just talk about faith, he lived it, choosing obedience to the Father's will over his own human desires. 
His faith led him to the ultimate act of love and sacrifice, laying down his life for the sins of the world. Jesus' journey to the cross was the pinnacle of faith in action. As he hung on the cross, enduring unimaginable pain and humiliation, Jesus continued to express faith, entrusting his spirit to the Father with the words, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, Luke 23 verse 46. His faith was not in vain, for on the third day, God raised him from the dead, demonstrating his victory over sin and death and fulfilling the promise of eternal life for all who believe. Jesus' entire life, death, and resurrection are the ultimate testament to what it means to have faith in action. He didn't just talk about faith, he lived it in every moment, from his compassionate miracles to his ultimate sacrifice on the cross. Jesus showed us that true faith is inseparable from action, it is lived out through love, obedience, and a deep trust in God's plan, no matter the cost. As we look to Jesus as our example, we are reminded that our faith, too, must be active. It's not enough to simply believe, we are called to follow in his footsteps, to live out our faith through acts of love, service, and obedience. Jesus' life challenges us to put our faith into action in our daily lives, to trust in God's plan for us, and to be willing to take up our cross and follow him, knowing that just as Jesus was faithful to the Father, so too will the Father be faithful to us. Putting your faith into action. So, how do we put our faith into action today? The Bible is full of examples of ordinary people who listened to God's voice and took bold steps of faith despite the uncertainties they faced. Like Abraham, Moses, and Rahab, we too are called to listen, trust, and act. But what does that look like in our daily lives? How can we, in our modern context, live out a faith that is alive and active? It all begins with a willingness to listen to God's voice. Just as Abraham had God's call to leave his homeland, just as Moses responded to God's commission to confront Pharaoh, and just as Rahab acted on her belief in the God of Israel, we too must be attentive to what God is saying to us. This starts with spending time in prayer and immersing ourselves in God's word. Prayer is not just about presenting our requests to God, it's also about quieting our hearts to hear his guidance, his nudges, and his invitations to step out in faith. The Bible, God's living word, is our roadmap, offering wisdom, encouragement, and direction for our lives. As we engage with scripture, we open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit's leading, allowing God to shape our desires, priorities, and actions. Once we've sought God's guidance, the next step is crucial, taking action. This is where faith moves from being a belief in our hearts to a visible expression in our lives. Often, God calls us to take steps of obedience even when it's difficult or when we don't have all the answers. Abraham didn't know exactly where he was going when he left his homeland, but he trusted God and obeyed. Moses didn't feel equipped to confront Pharaoh, but he stepped out in faith, relying on God's strength. Rahab didn't know what the future held for her or her family, but she acted on her belief in God and was saved. Similarly, we may not always see the full picture, but God calls us to trust Him and move forward. Putting faith into action doesn't always require grand gestures, often it's about the small, everyday choices we make. It could be as simple as showing kindness to someone in need, offering a listening ear to a friend who's struggling, providing a meal to a neighbor who's going through a tough time, or standing up for someone who's being mistreated. These acts of compassion, though seemingly small, are powerful expressions of faith. They reflect the heart of Jesus, who went out of his way to touch the lives of the marginalized, the hurting, and the lost. Sometimes, putting faith into action means standing up for what's right even when it's unpopular or uncomfortable. It could involve advocating for justice, speaking out against wrongdoing, or making decisions that align with God's principles, even when it costs us. Faith in action may also involve sharing your faith with a friend or family member, offering them the hope that you found in Christ. This can be daunting, especially in a culture that often resists discussions about faith. But remember, God doesn't call us to have all the answers, 
he simply asks us to be willing to share the story of his love and grace. There are times when God might call us to something even bigger, something that stretches us beyond our comfort zones. Maybe he's prompting you to start a ministry, to serve in a new capacity at your church, or to take on a leadership role in your community. Perhaps he's asking you to forgive someone who has wronged you, releasing bitterness and allowing his love to heal a fractured relationship. Or maybe God is calling you to trust him with a major life decision, a career change, a move to a new place, or a step into the unknown. Whatever it is, remember that true faith is not passive. It's a dynamic force that compels us to act, to live out what we believe. Faith in action isn't about waiting until we feel completely ready or until every detail is perfectly lined up. It's about taking the next step, trusting that God is with us, guiding us, and empowering us along the way. As you put your faith into action, you'll begin to see God move in your life in powerful ways. You'll experience His provision, His guidance, and His grace in situations where you once felt uncertain or afraid. And as you walk in faith, your relationship with God will deepen. You'll begin to recognize His voice more clearly, to trust His heart more fully, than to see His hand at work in every aspect of your life. Faith in action is not just about what we do, it's about who we become, a people transformed by the love of God, living out His purposes in a world that desperately needs His light. So, take that step of faith today, whatever it may be, and watch as God uses your obedience to bring about His kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Let's close with a prayer. Lord, may your name be glorified. Thank you for the gift of faith. Help us to not only believe in you, but to act on that belief in our daily lives. Give us the courage to step out in faith, even when it's difficult or when we don't see the whole picture. Use our actions to bring glory to your name and to draw others closer to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you go about your day, remember that your faith is a living, active force. Let it move you to love, to serve, and to trust God in every area of your life. If this message has touched your heart, I encourage you to take a moment to reflect on how you can put your faith into action today. If you found this devotion helpful, please consider subscribing to our channel so you won't miss out on future content. We'd also love to hear from you. Share your thoughts and how you plan to put your faith into action in the comments below. Your insights and experiences can inspire and encourage others in our community. Thank you for joining us, and may God bless you as you walk in faith.